Uh, could be a... Yes. Sorry, you're clicking again. Your your mic is hitting your zipper. Oh, sorry. No. Of course. Yeah, no problem. I can solve that, right? Yeah. yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. It would have been weird oh, if he would have stood oh. up and took his pants off. I was going to say, your chest hair scrub out of my your shirt, darling. Could you just take... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm bringing the party to you. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? You big dummy. <gasps> oh, great Odin's raven. Say hello to my little friend. I stepped in a ditch last night, man. I almost closed my balls off, man. You take drugs, Danny? Every day. Good. What's the problem? Hey everyone, welcome to the Pulp Culture Cafe. This is Season 10, Episode 276, and once again, it is the tree of us. Uh, that's French for three, uh, tree. And um, <clears throat> uh, I am John, and I am the... Usually on these shows, a lot of times, if you've been tuning in lately, I do have information, but a lot of times I sit back and let... The other two fellas do all the talking, and I do my worst Kevin Smith invitation. So, I'm John. The next guy is... I'm Paul, and I'm from the UK. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy that's ignoring us... My name is Scott, no. and I'm from my mother's vagina. Is that near Regina? It is. It smells the same way, too. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, welcome to the but... show. Um, uh, again, like I said, we're recording from three different places. Um, oh, fuck, I, these morning, I cannot still get my brain working <laughs> to do the intros on these morning calls for it. But anyways, hey, let's get this boat on the road, and we're just going to talk. Whereas, so any information is going to be all over the place. So have fun listening and learning what the fuck we're doing. So um, we're going to start with Paul. He's got shit. <laughs> I have. I have. That is true. I have got shit. Okay. I have all manner of shit. Um, I, I'm going to chuck in just a quick one just to get us warmed up. Um, no comment required. Uh, just letting you guys know that I finally started watching Superman and Lois. It's mm. uh, started showing on the BBC. So mm. I started watching it uh, probably last week, week before, something like that. And you're right. It's actually pretty good. I'm enjoying it, As, considering it's a CW show. <laughs> um, it's probably uh, about as good as the old start. So I'm interested to see where it goes in seasons two and three and four, uh, and if it'll go downhill and they start getting all ridiculous and stupid at some point. Um, but I'm actually quite enjoying it. It's almost like a real television show <laughs> with real characters <laughs> and, and a real story and a plot. I think it's I, I think it's really clever. We're or a novel idea, who'd have thought? Um, but yes, I'm actually I'm actually enjoying it quite a lot. It's so, it's very good. People compare to Zack Snyder's actual Man of Steel. It had a lot of the same cinematography in it. I mean, mm-hmm. in the first episode, people were really blown away yeah. by how different it was. Read that as good mm-hmm. compared yeah. to the other CW yeah. shows, but they really they really uh, nodded to uh, Zack Snyder and said, "Hey, this is how he did it." And it's amazing because when Man of Steel came out in what 2012. 2013, Ooh, 2013. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People thought that it was fantastic and it was really original. But the fact they're able to bring that same vibe to a TV show, hmm. well done to them. Because uh, oh, I was yeah. I was expecting that at all. No, it absolutely shows just how far television has come in the last yeah. several years. Um, and yeah, it's probably an ambition that they want to try to uh, to reach. Uh, if we hadn't had shows like uh, Game of Thrones. Um, yeah. and Walking Dead, for better or for worse. Um, you know, Sopranos, Lost, that sort of thing. 
Um, and again, you know, we've talked about that at length. It's the quality of television now. Everyone's pushing and pushing to get better and better. Yeah. And I've got a couple more TV shows that we're, yeah. we're going to talk about at some point. Uh, well, what that, uh, uh, what season? Yeah. You've got first season, Scott. What well, what season is it here? Uh, Superman Lois. It's just the end of the first season. They haven't started the second season yet. Wow. Okay. It just seems like it's been on for fucking forever already for me, and I don't even uh, watch it. They did a. They did a. Yeah, they they did the uh, like ten episodes, then they did a break, and they came back, and I'm pretty sure that yeah, they just ended the first season. It's a, I think it, it was seem- like. Go ahead. Well, it just it just seems long because of COVID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They took a break. They took an extended break in between uh, the first, I think, the first eight episodes, and they did another ten. But there was a, like a five month break in there, but. The good thing was when it came back, it really didn't. Uh, they did good, some good promoing for it, and it didn't. I remember reading about the ratings that they really didn't go downhill too much. I wonder so. if something like that will take off where they do ten shows, even after COVID's done. We do ten shows, and then we yeah. take a we take a break, kind of get everybody rested up, and then do another ten shows instead of worrying. Yeah. Because nowadays with everything, who needs seasons, right? Who needs yeah, the I'd... fall season premiere? It's uh, well, how many times have we said you don't need twenty episodes per season? Yeah, it's it's almost like having two seasons. Yeah. You've got one season of ten episodes, you've had a break, and then another season of ten yeah. episodes. You know why not? You don't need to fill a season with twenty four episodes, twenty or twenty four episodes. Yeah, because that's where your filler comes from. That's where your padding comes from. Because yeah. you you're just rushing to for, to get content out mm-hmm. to meet your deadlines. Yeah, but you know just. You know, write a story and just get it out when it's ready. Because a lot of times people now are, I don't know the percentage of people watching first run when it first comes on, especially on uh, network TV. But I bet you a lot of those people have now fucking, um, uh, v- they're not VCR. What the fuck are they called? I don't even have one anymore. So. DVR. DVR, that's it, yeah. DVR. And basically, if they did 10 episodes, take okay. a break. Do like a two-parter hmm. for your tw- uh, eleven and twelve. Mm-hmm. Two-parter about you know, somewhere in the middle. Make it special. That could be your crossover, or whatever. And then go and take a break and do another ten episodes. There's your twenty-two episodes, mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel like you're just doing filler. They feel like event programming. Yeah. And I, I've never understood why they don't do that. No. Well, it's, that's what I mean. After COVID, and they see the numbers, you know, are not. Uh, changing or even in yeah, maybe I, increasing because of the word of mouth people are saying the show's really good. Yeah, uh, hmm. yeah. Uh, you're usually pretty good on this sort of thing, Scott. So do you happen to know how many people are watching Superman and Lois? Has it got decent um, views? I know when it started, it was doing about 1.7 million, hmm. and it was the best of the shows at that point in time. I know it yeah. dropped off a bit. Um, like and when it get down to like episode seven and eight, it, it dropped like two or three hundred thousand viewers in those one episode. And have you watched the whole first season? How far are you no. into it? No, no, I'm only about uh, four or five episodes into it. Okay, you'll you actually you'll know the episode I'm talking about without me even telling you about it because you they did. It's almost like they were losing some of their audience, and they did a little bit of a panic episode. I call it where hmm. they'll take certain characteristics of characters. And they'll flip it, and you're like, wait a minute, that's the first we've heard of that, and now this person's doing this? It's kind of like, uh, you know, on, on The Flash when they had uh, 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 Iris, all of a sudden she's a, you know, a world-renowned newspaper sleuth, and like, wait a minute, what the hell? How'd she do that? They did something like that, and it was yeah. a big one, too, and they lost some ratings on that, but they turned it around. I think it was, it's, it, I want to say like a million to a million and a half, something like that. It's over a million, it's well over a million. And yeah. for CW shows, that's really good. That's um, good. Yeah, that's good yeah, for that, yeah, that yeah. type of show. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, I'm pleased to hear it. Because it yeah, deserves it. He's doing well. Yeah, it is. Very good. So that um, was my quick opener. Quick okay. Of a ten. Well, that's, yeah. his, that's what he whipped it out. Showed us I, I, have, go on. Huh? I have a story about retaining to the CW. Either of you, because I put it on my Twitter, and I'm not sure what you saw it or not, Paul. This, uh, the Warner Brothers is shopping around the CW network. I saw your tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I, I mean, it surprised me, and then after a moment, it didn't surprise me 
because <laughs> they, they probably they run it into the ground basically. You know, it's like uh, it's like when you've got a car that you love. I I, I used to have a, a Toyota Celica GT4, uh, like a Rally Sport edition. Absolutely loved that car. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, 240 brake horsepower, you know, two liter turbo engine. It was uh, it was oh, yeah. a really really nice car. And I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna drive this around for about a year. And then I'm going to get rid of it because it's going to be very expensive to run. And I don't want to have to start putting it right once it starts to go wrong. Yeah. I loved it so much that I kept it. And basically, it just ran into the ground. Um, <laughs> and it needed a new radiator. Um, all the uh, the tires were wearing on the insides because of the, the, the angle they were at. Um, <clears throat> it started pissing oil out all over the place. And eventually, when I did go to sell it, it was practically worthless. And it's basically, it's like the CW. Uh, <laughs> CW 10 years ago was yeah, uh, yeah. Toyota Celica GT4 Turbo, mm. um, and they've just run it into the ground. And now yeah. they're shopping it around to try and sell it, and it's just worthless because yeah. it's, it's pissing oil out and, uh, and all its tyres are bold. So it, it's, it's unsurprising. I looked at the ratings of some of the series. Um, you know, when Supergirl went off the air, they painted that as she's leaving to move on to better things and blah, blah, blah. The, mm. fir- the last couple of episodes did like two to 400,000 viewers. Mm-hmm. I watched very just, recently the, the <clears throat> final two episodes of Supergirl, just for posterity, because yeah. I stopped watching Supergirl <laughs> about a yeah, year yeah, and a yeah. half ago. No one put a gun to your head, though? You know, yeah. you're going to fucking watch <laughs> this. You're going to be one of those 200,000. If there's a show that I've had any sort of interest in, if, if I've had any sort of investment in it at all, and I know it's coming to an end, that's it, it's finishing, yeah. then I'm quite often curious to know mm. how it ends, how yeah. they're going to just <clears throat> end it. Uh, so I watched the last two episodes, because we're two parts, wasn't it? I thought, well, let's watch it. Let's yeah. see how we tie it all up. <laughs> I thought, well, what a waste of time that was. What an absolute waste of time that was. It's not. It wasn't even going out on a high. You know, I was kind of... I was kind of hoping there might be like a, a few cameo appearances. I mean, there were some cameos, but only from cast members from quite early on in the series run. Yeah. I was kind of hoping for the Flash or something, you know, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, some of the the, the broader, yeah. uh, the broader cast mm-hmm. of the other CW shows. But there was nothing, and the story itself was absolute dog shit. And just the way it was handled, it's like, wow, they are really, really phoning this in. They have yeah. spent very little money on the back end of this series uh, mm-hmm. and clearly nobody's particularly interested anymore. You know, even a couple of the cameos, it's like, Hey, where's the check? Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, Jim, like Jimmy Olsen who yeah. came in as guardian very briefly. Sorry yeah. to spoil it for, for people who haven't watched it yet, but oh. I really recommend you don't watch it because it's yeah. an absolute waste of your time. He, he clearly had absolutely no interest in being there. There was no, yeah. There was no life in him whatsoever. It was basically just they paid him to come back on just to sell it. Was just, there, there's it was a, awful. The director's chair, and there's a phone sitting on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, just, it's just yeah. a phone in, and you know you hear screaming from the phone, do this now, okay, go over yeah. here. I, honestly, I think that, that whoever was directing it, and I didn't notice, I think they had the, the phone was on speakerphone on the director's chair, mm-hmm. and literally mm-hmm. all they were shouting was, fuck it, do what you want. <laughs> and that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it. have you watched The Flash at all yet? Oh, where am I up to on The Flash? Um, have you I, watched the Crossover I, yet? Um, is this not Crossover? The... It's self-contained. Armageddon. Have I watched Armageddon? Jesus, I can't even remember. The last time I watched it, it was Godspeed was in it, and they were just dealing with him again. Uh, for some reason, uh, no, I, and I think that was the end of the previous season. I think Armageddon must be the new season, which I haven't started watching yet. Uh, yeah, it's the second, right? it's the second half of the new season. But I mean, it's it's amazing. I've watched the first three parts, mm. and the last two have been out for probably three to four weeks now. Yeah. Haven't watched it. It's amazing. And even Sue was telling me she said, "If if Flash is on next year, I'm not watching it." And mm. you have no idea how, as a casual fan how big of a fan she was. She's like, I'm not watching this shit anymore. Mm, she just wow. said, I, I'm going to watch it this year, but I, I, my understanding wasn't cancelled yet. She says, I don't want to watch this anymore. Yeah. It's it's not very good. It's not very no. good. Mm. That's heartbreaking. You know what upsets me more than anything is when they call something, like we've had the uh, the Crisis events, mm-hmm. and yeah. that was loosely based on Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah. And when there was Armageddon, it took me back to Armageddon when you had Wave Rider, who was 
traveling through different times and he was crossing over with every single DC character and every single DC comic book um, because it was approaching the, the end of the world or the end of the universe and Wave Rider was trying to find which DC character went bad and caused the end of the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this is about 30 years old. I don't know whether you remember it at all. Um, and just using the word Armageddon in the context of a DC comic book show yeah. just made me think, are they going to do something along those lines? Now, they may or may not be. Uh, part of me wishes that they were, because that was a really, really good storyline. And part of me wishes that they don't, because they'll do an absolute piss-poor job of it, and I'll hate it. I'll be very, very upset. So I don't know which way it's going. I don't know which way it's going to be. But does uh, if you've seen the first episode, first couple of episodes, does it ring... Does, does anything ring a bell with anything at all to do with Armageddon? I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about. It's like a 30-year-old storyline from DC Comics. Yeah, I do. Um, I don't. I actually don't know much about the 30-year-old storyline because I don't think I read it. But the storyline itself, um, hmm. <laughs> it was, it was, when I heard the, it did the, the director or the executive producer just gushing over the fact that Irish saves the day, <laughs> before I even saw it, and I was thinking, yeah. okay. <laughs> I okay. mean, that's what that's what everyone tunes in for, isn't it? Yeah. That's what yeah. we all watch The Flash for, yeah. because we can't wait to see Iris save the day. <laughs> it's funny, there was a there was an award show on. It was like a, a an online magazine. I thought I sent a tweet. Maybe I didn't because I just didn't feel like dealing with it. It's an online <laughs> magazine, and they voted her best actress in a superhero show. And I was well, like, oh my god, just just taking the whole sack. Just taking the whole sack. Like I was like, what a kiss ass. And I think they they uh, named um, uh, the actor who plays Barry Allen as best actor. Mm-hmm. It was it's almost like they said, who can we get for an interview after we give him this award? It was hilarious. Yeah, and yeah. People and people and the reason was is there was a tweet on it. People saying, what the fuck? Out of all the good actresses through all the different superhero mo- superhero mm-hmm. series. You know, through HBO and Netflix and Prime, mm. she got the award. And this is a fair size magazine too, an online magazine. But wow. it's where they're at. I mean, it's advertising they pay for. It. I actually read an interesting story about the kids. Now, Riverdale is another show on CW, and they are close to a revolt because the kids don't want to stay in Vancouver anymore. People are tired of the shitty weather in Vancouver. The 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 actors and I read, oh, yeah. I heard rumblings about it over the years that they didn't want to be in Vancouver. And I have to do some more research on it, but the kids from the Riverdale cast are like, you know what? Get us the fuck out of here, or we don't want to do the show anymore, which is amazing. Good. They can cancel the show and move on to something good then. (laughs) Fuck. Yeah. But I I, I suspect a lot of the shows are just like, you know, they're just just winding down their time now. I mean, Legends of Tomorrow, I don't know how it's still on the air, although someone did stand up for it the other day and said that, because uh, I said I left in like season three or four, and they said if you gave it another season in five, six, seven, it was a little better. So I'm like, okay, well, good enough. Yeah. Maybe down the road when I'm in my seventies and some seniors home, I'll watch the last three seasons of Legends. But other yeah. than that, plenty of other stuff to watch. Yeah, I, Legends is probably one that I'm just going to watch the last two episodes of when it eventually ends. Inevitably yeah. ends. I haven't um, watched. You know, I've stopped such a long time ago. I don't even care about. <laughs> Even like tuning in like you do, Paul. You know, mm. seasons end. Let's see how they end it. I don't give a fuck. I just end the thing and then <laughs> just I don't care. Move on to the next. It, it's almost like morbid curiosity. It's yeah. also like how does it end? How, yeah. How does you know what? How are you going to wrap this up? What's going to happen with these characters? You, you're not one because of those guys that fucking curiosity. rubberneck, are you? You're going down the highway. There's an accident. Oh, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Let's no. pull over and take a look, dear. I want to see how this story ended. Yeah, fun- <laughs> funnily enough, no, that's no, that's the one I would have interest. I've just, uh, I've just googled uh, Armageddon. It's actually twenty years, not thirty. Uh, I thought it yeah. was the nineties, but it's not. It was Armageddon two thousand and one, apparently. Mm. And if yeah. I remember correctly, I think it was that year because DC used to do themed annuals. It's like they did Year One, they did Elseworlds. Uh, and this particular year was uh, Armageddon, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, and, it's, and it was very good, very, very enjoyable. So that 
that's kind of what. I, but I thought, no, nah, that's too ambitious. You can't do that because that involves a lot of other characters, and I think they're moving away from that because they're wrapping everything up. Mm, everything's yeah. being cancelled. Everything's coming to an end. Whatever is still going on, just spending very little money on it. I mean, from what I saw of the last series, The Flash, we've already talked about this. It yeah. just look. It looks terrible. And when we you talk know, about the CW, it terrible. we talk mm. about the CW. Yeah, I yeah. only think of the CW shows, but there's more to that channel, isn't it? Mm. Is it is it a is it an irregular channel that shows other stuff like afternoon yes, uh, talk shows and Vampire shit like that? Vampire Legacies, uh, the Walker after after a Supernatural uh, finished, the the cast one of the member the actors went into a show called Walker. Yeah, I think. yeah. I, I, yeah. I, what I'm talking about is that they have like a like ABC CBS. You know, during the day they have you know some shit. Sh- lady who's sitting down bringing in people on and talk about their next new adventure on some episode you know regular know tv they, no i don't know whether they do or not I, all i hear about from cw is the shows they show at night i don't hear anything i think they just show reruns of like sitcoms like syndicated stuff during the day okay. i was gonna say they, they must pat out the uh, the schedule with other stuff but i bet they don't make anything other than no. superhero no. shows because yeah. i've yeah. not heard of anything yeah. but uh, I, I will uh, segue into something here that I intend to talk about. So has anyone been watching Titans? Titans season three yes. dropped. Yes. I've watched I, the first two and kind of backed off. I'm up to, I think I just watched episode 10 or 11 of season three. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah. Hmm. And this is, and we said going into Titans because. As well. When you watch the credits at the end, there's an awful lot of familiar names. Awful yeah. lot of familiar names. There's um, uh, Greg Balant is in there. Jennifer Lentz is in there as a, as a, as a producer, I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of names that you recognise from some of these CW shows, and certainly from Arrow. Um, <laughs> they got the Arrow uh, stunt crew. Like, holy yeah. shit, those are awesome fight scenes. I was like, so, oh, that's where the yeah. Arrow stunt crew went. Yeah, yeah. So this, it, it's like the natural progression of Arrow. It's yeah. like it, it's there's no way they would have let Arrow go this far uh, on the CW because yeah. it's too family friendly, yeah. um, and they drop an awful lot of f bombs. If we're being honest, I think they drop too many f bombs because I'm with you still, there. Yeah, it's still a superhero show. At the end of the day, I know it's more mature. I know it's a slap for slightly older audience, perhaps, mm-hmm. but it's still a superhero show. And it's still they still drop a lot of yeah. It. It's every, one thing that turns me off. Jason Todd says, "Is it yeah. It's, it's like, like that. I think they're yeah. trying too hard to show they're grown ups." Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But as, that aside, language, you know, dialogue choice aside, <laughs> uh, it is still very, very good. Um, and I, I really, I've enjoyed all the seasons so yeah. far, to be quite yeah, honest. Me too. Um, and this is really, it's uh, its really not exception. I, I think it's actually really pretty good. Mm. Um, I'm surprised with how far they're taking Jason Todd in, the, in this season. I mean, mild spoilers, but I think it's probably in the trailers, uh, which I didn't watch. Um, Jason Todd becomes Red Hood mm. in this yeah. later season. <laughs> um, it kind of follows his trajectory to Red Hood in that he confronts the Joker, and we all know how that ends. Um and then it comes back, and then it sort of goes off on its own. It's like a news story. I don't remember him being involved with the Scarecrow to uh, to this degree, um, mm. which, again, might be a mild spoiler for the TV show. But Dear I'm, God, I haven't watched I'm, the rest, you son no, of a I'm bitch! Try, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be vague, but... Um, <laughs> nah, actually, fuck, go it, for it. It's good. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And again, because of all the names that are involved with the CW, it's really quite surprising when they're allowed to do what I imagine they want to do mm-hmm. rather than what the network lets them get away with. Yeah. It just goes to show what they can produce. Mm-hmm. And I think they might have overcompensated to a slight degree because they're trying to go too dark and too mature. Mm-hmm. And it's it just doesn't quite sit right because not only is it a superhero property, it's also the Titans, uh, which is more the younger end. So, you know, I, I think they might have gone too dark and too mature, yeah. in air quotes. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, like Scott says, they, they, some of the fight scenes are, are, are really are very good. Mm. You know? Yeah, it, you, it's... Um, yeah, go ahead. You, yeah, you've got your street-level people, like you've got your Jason Todd, you've got your Dick Grayson, you've got your Hawk and Dove. Yeah. Um, and 
the the fights that they get involved in you know like multiple enemies uh, going on uh, at yeah. the same time uh it's not the same standard as you would expect something like you know the raid you know he's like indonesian or chinese martial arts films yeah. they're on a low <laughs> level yeah. but you know when you're comparing it to the rest of this type of show like the cw stuff or whatever uh it really is very good it's uh it, it's it's quite high quality um I, is it a netflix original do netflix pay for this no no it's a yeah. hbo series HBO, right. Any, anytime the yeah. Netflix shows, <laughs> I love how they do this. They, it's originally content created for another network. Mm. They buy the international rights for it. Yeah. Put it on their sh- thing and then say, look, it's an original net. No, it's not. You just bought it from somebody else, you lazy fuck. Right. Stop putting your name on it. Yeah, so. it's, if it's HBO, that kind of makes sense. It's oh, yeah. Got- it's got HBO written all over it, mm-hmm. um, just in the tone uh, and in the quality yeah. as well. To be fair, that's why you, uh, that's why you've got all your, uh, you know, fuck, 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 fuck. Hello, fuck, 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 yeah. fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah. So that's what turned me off the first two episodes. That's why I haven't went back. Yeah. So I don't yeah. need all the suck swear. I don't need it. Like, I, why do you need the swear constantly to prove that you're, you know, I'm a this is a mature show. We get to swear all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's the only yeah. that that's my only criticism. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I'm no prude, and I'm yeah. no stranger to swearing. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, the office that I work in, it's pretty much a separate language in itself. Yeah. Um, that we all use. Mm-hmm. Um, but just when you're watching something like that, you know, there's a line. And it's like that's too far. Yeah. It's a little too far. Yeah. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Uh, mm-hmm. Anything you want to add to that, Scott? You've watched. Uh, how much have you watched of it so far? I've watched it all, and I. Oh. Uh... <clears throat> A bit of a disagreement on the cursing. Um, I actually saw a conversation about this somewhere else. It was talking about Breaking Bad, actually, because yeah. there was a lot of cursing in Breaking Bad. But they said it's the characters. Hmm. These are these are relatively uneducated, angry young men. And if you list go to any high school, you're going to hear who's uneducated. Like the superheroes. The superheroes, yeah, the superheroes are just young, angry kids, especially Jason Todd. And mm-hmm. I've been around enough young, angry kids. They curse a lot. That's just the way they do. So that's and the the conversation was about um, uh, the character in Breaking Bad, um, not Heisenberg, the other the, his side, Jason Paul. Yeah. That he yeah. cursed a lot. He cursed a lot. And people said, well, yeah, he's a he's a drug dealing young punk kid, and the vocabulary isn't strong. So where are they basing this information on? The comic book or the TV series? Because in the TV series, the only one that, to me that gives me any impression that he's uneducated is Jason Todd. All the other ones Jason, seem to exactly. have... Yeah. But, but, but I, see, I, you I can't know, use Jason, Jason Todd. Todd. You can't use this, Jason, the character of Jason Todd on his own to say, this gives the, every every other character the right to swear as much. He was the only one I noticed that cursed a lot. That maybe no, I, never last, I mean, just so. Paul, every time fucking... Um, see, I'm used to swearing because I'm getting upset. The, the, uh, the, the lead there. Um, They're all upset. They're angry. Uh, the, the, what's his name? Uh, Nightwing. The character. Nightwing. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nightwing. Nightwing. He's swearing yeah. all the time. He's does, educated. Yeah, I, you know, look at all the smarts. Yeah, Jason Todd is by far the worst for it. By mm. far the worst for it. There's an element of truth in what Scott says. There's mm. an element of truth in what Scott says because Jason Todd is by far the worst and he is the street kid mm-hmm. of the bunch, yeah. isn't he? And that I agree um, with, but I don't agree with the other characters being uneducated. That's why we swear. Say, this, these superheroes looked like superheroes. Mm. You, Hawk, holy shit, the man was built like a brick shithouse. When he's laying in that bed, I was sitting there saying to myself, Oh my god, they made them go to the gym. They look like superheroes. Well, Same with oh, Dove. We talked like, about that guy last time. He's the new Jack Reacher in the T V series. Yeah, it's it's amazing. They look like superheroes. And I know really contrasted with all the stuff, you know, and I have said this about the arrow when you have a ninety pound lady with no, you know, chicken wing arms and you're trying to convince me she's kicking the shit out of these two hundred and fifty pound men. No. But the, mm. every character in this series look like they could actually kick some ass. Yeah, that is true. You know? That is true. So, I think Hawk and Dove on that point were actually excellent casting. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you just look at them and it's like they walk straight off a comic book page. Yeah, um, yeah. I, think, I think we might have mentioned this when we were talking about previous seasons, probably last year, year before, whenever it was. Mika but, Kelly, Jesus Christ. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. But, uh, but the costumes as well, the costume design. Yeah. 
outstanding. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yes. It, you can't understate just how much a decent costume adds to this sort of thing. It's they'd really they did an excellent job with the costume design. Um, like I said, Hawk and Dove especially. They look just like they've come off the page, but practical as well because they're, they're doing they're fighting and swinging about and doing kicks and things and and you know the, the way that Dove used the uh, the cloak, it's like armor, oh, just yeah. like lifted it and hid behind it while she was being shot at and the bullet mm. sort of ricocheted off and then dropped it back down again and continued fighting. It's like that's it really reminded well me of Dark out. Knight. It reminded yeah. me of Dark Knight where they were able to take they were able to take what would be real world uh, components and bring yeah. it into that superhero world and make it believable. Yeah. And I think they did that very well in and that's the first series like they don't do that in CW at all. I mean they spend more time in street clothes, but I think honestly it's a budget thing more than anything that they do that now. But yeah. um another guy I just wanna is the guy who played Scarecrow. Yeah. Of course he's been in Angel, he was in um uh Mad Men, Vincent Vincent the Car I wanna get his name right. Vincent Carthizer. Maybe I have that right, maybe or not. He played an excellent scarecrow. I thought yes. he was fantastic in the part. Um, yeah. I had heard he's not coming back, uh, and this wasn't rumors. This was he was actually taking up human resources. I guess he was a bad boy on set, and they said he wouldn't be returning, which is interesting. And uh, But I thought he was fantastic in the role. Yes. Fantastic. There was one particular episode that I watched recently, so it's at the back end, probably like 10 or 11, something like that. And he has a like an episode, like a breakdown. Yeah, and yeah. and I was watching him perform, and it's like, wow, he's this guy is really coming across as yep. insane. Yep. He really is playing this as, I mean, scary insane. You know, yep. it's like Scarecrow can probably be not so much a bit of a joke, but he's got a gimmick, you know. Yep. And it's like, yeah, he uses fear gas, you know, but yep. that's it. But. This particular guy, that particular episode, and that particular performance, that was scary, yeah. scary insane. It's like, yeah. wow, I would not want to cross paths with that guy, with yeah. that scarecrow. Um, so he really brought something to it. So, yeah. you know, just credit where it's due. It, it yeah, was he, a, uh, he was a really good scarecrow. The gas has always been the scarecrow's big weapon, but in this, his crazy was his his mental breakdown was the big weapon. The gas yeah. was just the you know, it was a snake. The snake bite was him. It was the venom mm. that was the gas. It was. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was incredibly well done. And it made the season because everyone yeah. he interacted with, every scene he was in, brought the care of the uh, actor he was in it with to a next level. So mm. I thought that was really well done. Yes. No, I agree. The, the the gas, the chemicals, that was just the tool of his trade. But he was the brains. He was behind yeah. everything, every yeah. step of the way. Uh, they, they kind of skimmed over some of it. You know, like. Uh, how on earth did you get access to Oracle? Um, can you can you really just walk into the Batcave and start telling the computers to do things? You'd expect some, yeah, yeah. you, you know, it, it, that was a moments like that just made me think. Hang on a minute, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go. There was one lazy bit of writing. Yeah, Donna Troy and Nightwing. Donna Troy and Nightwing. When Donna Troy came back, I had her got Nightwing. To the bit. They've not met yet. Uh, the last episode that okay. I saw, Donna okay. Troy was just was just walking back into Gotham. So whatever you, it doesn't. I won't say it. See if you know. So we'll talk about it next time. Right. If it's a massive spoiler, then you know maybe not, not a massive but... spoiler. Just lazy writing. No, but... no. Well, go go ahead. I mean, I know that they're going to meet up. I know that Donna Troy's back. I know that she's it... about to walk into Gotham, and I know that they're all going to meet up. So they, they it's not a spoiler. They made no big deal about it. Really, and it would have been a big deal. <laughs> You know, they it made no big deal. It would have been a really big deal. It would have been a just really in a, big deal. They're just in a scene together, and I looked at Susan and I said, "These guys had such." She just came back from this place, and he felt this way about her, and they're going over battle plans like they've been buddies for. The, it, it made no sense. It was lazy writing, and that's mm. the one that was a glaring example in the series that I was thinking mm. someone shit the bed on that storyline. So yeah, mm. yeah, There's, they took a couple of liberties. They did take yeah, a couple yeah. of liberties. Yeah. yeah. Generally speaking, it is very good. It's very well executed. All the component parts are very, very good. But every now and again, they do just drop something in and hope we don't notice. <laughs> and when we do notice, it's like, I got a minute. How well, they shot it, do you think I am? They shot it during COVID in Toronto. Right. And it's interesting because of the contrast. And um, 
that's a Toronto show, and the, we've talked about the Vancouver shows, and it's amazing the difference in the quality. But they shot it in Toronto during COVID, and all those scenes in the city, when they needed no one to be around, there really was no one around, and that mm. that actually added to the scenes because it was a fucking wasteland, and they were trying to portray it as a wasteland, and you didn't see any people around anywhere. I actually thought that brought it to the show, so. Kudos yeah. to COVID for showing up in Titans because it actually made the scenes much better. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was um, probably irresponsible of the producers to introduce a global pandemic just so they could clear the streets <laughs> of Toronto. <though. laughs> but it had decent Fuck results, so who yeah. are we to It's craft. It's craft, gentlemen. Yeah. They brought craft to it. Fuck. <laughs> Well, fair enough. So that's Titans Season 3 mm-hmm. showing on Netflix at the moment, guys. Uh, highly recommended. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, I'll try and watch it. <laughs> I gotta get past all the swearing. Give um, it a go. I, I mean, what Scott was saying is right. Um, that is how people talk. Um, I, I, I think that perhaps they need to be a little more responsible because it's a superhero show, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with trying to lead by example, even though it's a fair representation of how people actually speak. I think it's probably a probably a bit much for that type of show but mm. is is right in what he was saying or what the person in the interview was saying that that it really is how people speak sadly yeah especially people like jason todd mm. oh i can't even oh. tell you what i've been watching i just watched been watching steinfeld <laughs> how old is yeah. that right uh mash no. um nothing really I've never new. seen an episode of seinfeld yeah Are you all i can you tell you one? yeah Never oh, seen can, it. Never seen yeah. episode well, well, I, I hate check it fucking uh, Jason. Al- Jason Alexander is it? George, He's, yeah, yeah. Well, George is just. I want to kill him. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> I fucking hate him. But you're supposed to. That's what they're supposed to elicit. And that's what I mean. Good people. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you know the rest. You know, I can probably get away with, but him, he's just. Push him out in fucking traffic in New York and see what happens. <laughs> Watch the season twelve of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, fuck. It, it's the only show. There are certain shows. It's like it's like Dave Chappelle in comedy. You know, they can come at him all they want. He's bulletproof. He'll mm-hmm. be able to do comedy until the end of time. And same with Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm. He has jokes and scenarios on that show that if that was any other show in its first season would be canceled because they would deluge it with like protests and shit. But it's Larry David. They're not going to do anything to him. He's a multi-billionaire from Seinfeld. They're not going to take him off the air. Yeah. Um, but the the, the storyline for this season, I've had some belly laugh jokes. It's because it's comedy that you really don't see anymore. Mm. That just doesn't have any rules to it except being funny. Yeah. Which is the thing. So. I watched the first season of that, and I, I just didn't, I didn't find it that funny. And I yeah. really, really wanted to find it more funny, to encourage me to watch more and more of it. But mm. I just didn't find it funny. It I just didn't find stride. him funny. Jump to season three or four. I mean, right. that's when it really started hitting its stride. In season, I, I would say season three, it really hit its stride. Yeah. But it's just like anything else. It was, it was a very cheaply done show at the beginning. That even the concept at the time. I mean, it's normal now and. But, you know, to take the guy who created a hit show and make a show about him, it was, com- you know, I'm, I suspect he had a bare bones budget at the time and mm-hmm. it kind of yeah. showed those first things. But the comedy was there, the timing was there, the preposterous storylines that were just mined with comedy gold was there. And it really shows up. I mean, I belly laughed all the way through Curb Your Enthusiasm. I've seen yeah. a lot of comedy, so. so. Curb Your Enthusiasm and the, the, the character that, it's Larry David, isn't it? The guy yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now, I know he's supposed to be playing himself, but it's obviously a caricature of himself. Mm-hmm. Yes. But it's the, 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 this caricature or the character that Larry David's playing, it's the situations that he finds himself in remind me very much of Basil Fawlty in Fawlty Towers. But, uh, yeah. W- yeah. but without the mania and without the sort of the sharp wit and without the humor uh, it's, it's like, it's like uh, folding towers but not funny yeah it's like towers, but a lot slower and a lot less funny <laughs> because he finds himself in that type of situation where it's sort of like oh shit i'm about to make myself look like an idiot so i'm gonna try and lie my way out of it and that's just gonna make things even worse and it's essentially yeah. the plot of any faulty towers episode but it just doesn't have that John Cleese, Basil Fawlty, 
air about him. You know, this. I, I mean, if, I if you saw Faulty it. Towers, if you saw Faulty Towers first, you, I could understand why you would see it as kind of a second-rate character. I never mm-hmm. actually saw that much Faulty Towers, so right. I mean, I can I can understand your point of view on that. Hmm. So, what you're saying is, shut up, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I was saying I agree. I agree with you, Juan. I could, right. if you saw it from that point of view, I could absolutely see that. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. with him. I also like that he has a cast of characters in every season. Uh, they're playing themselves, mm-hmm. like, you know, the Hollywood actors playing themselves, like mm-hmm. John Hamm's in one season. Uh, Tracy Ullman's actually in this season, and it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the the comedy he's able, the dialogue he's able to put in their mouths also mm-hmm. adds to that. It's not just his dialogue, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, that's... Oh, the title's too long, but I really like that. Just like Faulty Towers, just not funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Faulty Towers, but not funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah. best way I can describe it. Yeah. I, I might give it another go. Everybody, I mean, it's like Seinfeld. Everybody speaks about it so highly. I feel <clears> like I'm missing out. But nah. like I say, just that first. Maybe it's just because it's the first season. Maybe it just. Maybe I should just jump in. Oh, it's like the, season the, three or four. Well, or I gotta say something. the same thing about two things. Seinfeld. One is that I just. Uh, uh, it's on Netflix, so I can yeah. just put it on while I'm eating. First <clears throat> season, the second season are not that great. It gets right. better. It gets better later on. Yeah. So yeah. it's so you can use that. Some of the same sort of things, Seinfeld. Hmm. And I think Kirby Enthusiasm is just a, another Seinfeld show, in a way, except there's just one single character. And instead of having a, an entourage, she has just different people coming in and all time playing. That's what I get from it. Same sort of thing. Some guy that runs in situations and he's more concerned about himself and how he looks than uh, um, what it actually. You know, one or two things and the problem would be solved. I mean, Scott, you even told me that one time. He said, if you only did this one thing, the problem would be solved. So it's a sound Nothing exciting. is taboo. Yeah, Nothing but what, taboo. He, he could do one. He, he has this problem. If he did this one thing, the problem would be solved. But because he doesn't do that one thing, he goes a fucking all around. You know, instead of taking a tunnel through a mountain, you decide, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to go over top. You know? Yeah. So that's what sounds like curb is. Is this... The guy deciding he doesn't want to go through the tunnel is going to go over top, so it's fucking harder yeah. and bitch about it. Well, it's it basically the thesis of uh, that and Seinfeld is if you're not a selfish asshole, the world will be so much better. Mm. But you want to be a selfish <laughs> asshole, yeah. so the world's not that much better. Yeah, that's just basically the thesis of it. That's yeah. it. But the fact that he's selfish, I mean, we've all done it. I mean, we've all been in situations where you think to yourself, if that fucking guy hadn't done that, this wouldn't have happened, this wouldn't have happened, and this would have happened. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing I've always loved about that entire thing is I can relate it to stuff that has gone on in my life. And even like both Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm, there have been plots, uh, you know, uh, point plots that I've sit there saying to myself – yeah, I've actually had that happen before. You know, you're you're in a social situation and something will happen and you just want to say something. Only Larry David says it, and that's mm-hmm. where the comedy's from because you're yeah. thinking it. He says yeah. it. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go, another go at some point. I have so much to watch. So yeah, much. Yeah, there's plenty of to watch. To watch. I, oh. I, and again, if, if no desire to watch it, don't watch it. There's so much to watch. Watch what you oh, like. The mm. stuff that, yeah, it's like... I, uh, Cobra Kai season four recently came out. I can't wait to see Cobra Kai season four. Mm-hmm. The first three seasons are really good. Yeah. Three, episodes three episodes in. Three episodes in. Three episodes in. Yeah. I'm in zero. <laughs> I, I, I imagine you enjoyed the first three to be to be three deep into season four. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, it is. I, after I watched the Karate Kid, I, I, God knows how many years ago. It's an eighties film, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it must be mid. Mid eighties at the latest, if not earlier, perhaps. And uh, Ralph Macho was forty at that time. Still, <laughs> yeah. he was probably older than he was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I watched that, it's I would never have dreamt that we would have a show like Cobra Kai so many years later, and how important it would be 
to these characters. You'd expect Karate Kid to be a throwaway film. Karate Kid, oh yeah, I remember that. That was that thing about Daniel San and Mr. Miyagi and stuff. But they did such a good job in season one, just sort of like reintroducing this guy, this um, oh god, what's his what's his name? Uh, I was going to say his, his, the actor's name is, is William Zapka, isn't it? But what's his bloody name in the show? Um, I'm blanking on it. Kramer. Billy, I, uh... <laughs> I, I I don't have it down on the list to talk about. It just came up in conversation, and I, I don't have my uh, notes with it. It's um, Billy. Did you say Billy Scott? He's, uh, I think that's yeah. his. I think that's the actor's name is Billy oh. Zapka or something like that. Uh, but what's his bloody name in the show? It's um, Johnny, Johnny something. Johnny, or other. yeah, Johnny. Uh, Johnny Blaze. Johnny, Johnny something or other. <laughs> I think it's called. I know uh, the might, whole. Might be thinking, uh, I have a hilarious story that you will see and you'll laugh, even though it's not meant to be laughed at in the scene. They try and make it one of those powerful '80s scenes, but they have yeah. songs sometimes that they'll put in the show. And this yeah. song, it's about Cobra Kai and Miyagi Do working together. Yeah. And the chorus of this song is two heads is better than one. Yeah. But when you, they're singing the lyrics and you can tell that the lyrics is clearly about a guy getting blown by two women. <laughs> you, can clearly, you can clearly tell that's what as many of those rock songs in the 80s were about. Yeah. Just about getting late, yeah. You can clearly tell that it's about some guy getting blown by two women. And this song uh, is playing in the background. As they're, you know, working together, I was just, I started laughing my ass off, and I'm thinking, wonderful. And you'll hear it, you'll be like, you'll start laughing. If, I don't know whether you watch it with your wife. Don't tell her beforehand. Just let her say, honey, listen to the lyrics and see what they're talking about. Yeah. It's clearly talking, he's talking about two chicks. Oh, blood. man, that is, that is so funny. That, I mean, that's what most rock songs of the time were exactly, about. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Unbelievable. But, but if there's it's... a couple of lyrics, it's like, I looked at Susan and said, that's getting some guy getting blown by two chicks and then turned into like a an inspirational montage from the show. Oh my god, so that's so funny. Hey, yeah. but back back to what I was going to say just very briefly. Like I say, it's not on my list, but just very briefly, the way that they reintroduce this Johnny character, um, you almost immediately had sympathy for him. Uh, just the, the direction that his life had gone, and just sort of the mess that it was, and the, the struggles that he was having. It was sort of it was almost instantly likable in that respect um because i think we could, we, we could all look at him and think wow yeah okay i can relate to a lot of what's going on in his yeah. life you know shitty job shitty apartment not enough money shitty car it's like wow we've all been there yeah. we have all been there um and to get to the point at the end of season three where all the way through you really really want daniel and johnny to sort of like just make up and be friends that's Be bum really buddies. Oh, you want? Yeah, <laughs> I, maybe not to that degree. You know, just, I, you know, just at least be civil with each other. Yeah. You know, at least friendly. And every now and again, they chuck in an episode where they get together and they start being friendly, and it means everything. And then all of a sudden, something happens, and they just butting heads again straight away. And it's like, oh, so close. Mm, yeah. And then at the end of season three, you sort of get that, and it, and it's like, come on, this is this is what you know. It's like. <laughs> 20, 30 years ago, whenever it was, 30 years ago, you know, I never have thought in a million years that I'd be sort of cheering on these two guys getting together to be sort of like teammates or be friendly with each other. I wouldn't have cared. It wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have, I wouldn't have cared. Mm. But they've done such a good job with this show. It's 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 just so good. It's It comes off as like a kid's show because it kind of focuses more on the kids more mm. than anything else. Yeah. But the story that he's telling, and because it sort of centers around Daniel and Johnny, it's got that hit of nostalgia. Uh, and it sort of, it draws on all the history of these characters and this, these movies so well. It's really compulsive viewing. It, it's, it's actually really, really good. Mm. I can highly recommend it. You really well, there's like... a, what's his Go. name, Kyle Reese. Um, mm. It's a guy, what's his, is it Reese? Is that his name? The, the, the. Crease. Crease, crease. Crease, yeah. Like a season, crease in your without, pants. Yeah, crease in your pants. Without giving too much away, Martin Cove, who plays John Reese. Yeah. There was a scene last night we were watching the episodes, and I, I turned to Susan and I said, how the hell is this guy not doing movies or more TV? Why is he stuck in this Cobra Kai universe? Because he is one of the best evil 
dramatic actors I've seen probably in the last 10 years. And it baffles me that he isn't bigger. He, or think, he isn't doing good. I, I think it was quite big in the 80s. It was in, uh, was it Cagney and Lacey? It was a regular, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, he was a regular in Cagney and Lacey. I think he was quite big in the 80s. So I suspect he's done something wrong at some point. Yeah, and that's the only thing I can think of. He must have fucked it up for himself. So yeah, not through because, lack of talent, just because yeah. he must have fucked it up for himself. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> There's a scene between him and um, um, a game that you went too much away, a character from the series. And every scene he is in, and again, just like I mentioned with uh, Vincent, uh, what's his name from and Scarecrow and Titans, mm. every scene he's in, he brings up the actors that he's working with. Yeah, it's just amazing. I, I don't yeah. know why he's not doing more work other than you write he shit the bed somewhere and now he's kind of stuck in purgatory. Yeah. That's just my guess. That's that's normally how it works. But yeah, uh, yeah so good. Here's one little tidbit um, for you and the uh, and for the listeners. Uh, so Martin Kov's character is called Priest. Uh, I think in probably the original film and I think to a degree in the series as well. He talks about his military history talks about learning karate in the army etc that sort of thing in it man four with donnie yen uh donnie yen ends up um coming up against uh, a karate instructor in the military now bear in mind that uh, the it man is set years ago it's not mm. it's not current it's not present day yeah it was it was years ago donnie yen long story short he ends up going on to a military base into a training facility where this particular karate instructor, who's a, an absolute dickhead, um, is uh, he's got all his students knelt around him. And as Donnie Yen walks in to go and confront this dickhead karate trainer, he calls one of his students Mr. Crease. Oh wow! And the yeah, exactly. Uh, so there you go. That's 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 just a little tidbit sure. for you personally. Nice. Uh, and for the listeners, Hitman 4 mm-hmm. mentions Mr. Crease, ties into Crease's military background from the Karate cool. Shared mm-hmm. Universe. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I love when they shared do stuff universe. like that, actually. Yeah. And yeah, I actually seen that movie you're talking about. So that's when you start describing this scene, oh, I know that scene he's mentioning. Yeah. But I didn't know yeah. the Crease part because I'm not that. Well, in that. It, it'll just go over your head. It'll just be a random character. Yeah. But as soon as I heard it, I had to rewind it and listen again. Did I just mishear that? Mr. Crease, mm. I thought that's that's on purpose. They've chosen mm. that name on purpose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's got, I mean, not deliberately to tie it in to you know to say yeah. that it's all part of the same universe. It's just I'm a sort of joking about that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's yeah. like you know, let's just chuck that in. It's a, it's it man. It's a martial arts movie. Yeah. Let's chuck in the name Crease because yeah. it's the same name as the karate guy from the, from the karate kid. Mm-hmm. There you go. So anyway, what's next on the list? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is great this is gold this, we're, we're talking I, uh, about some really good stuff this week yeah, I got yeah. nothing um, <laughs> so what, no, I know neither, neither one of you don't watch this and that's fine but I watched the uh, season finale of Yellowstone yeah um, I don't, don't watch that yeah yeah and uh, it was this season was kind of a mixed bag and I really like the show and it's good but I, again you know you have one of those seasons in a program when this the the season finale from last year is just huge and you can't top it, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what that's kind of what the the problem I had with this season. But I, I'm not sure where they could have gone. Um, there was a lot of promotion for the new 1883 series, which I'll get to in a little while. Um, it's really good, but Yellowstone this year was good. I think it could have been better. Um, there the uh, the actor did you see Kevin Costner No Way Out? Have you seen him in a movie by that name by any chance, either one of you? Is that the military one where he's an actual yes. spy? Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Does it, yeah. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, he, there was a, the guy from, you know him from Armageddon. He was one of the uh, cast members in Armageddon. He was the guy that had the son where he went to visit him before he left for outer space. He's that done act. quite a few bits and pieces. He's called exactly. um, Will something. Was he? Or was that his character's name? Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You know, know who I'm talking about. Yeah. He was in this season, and they only had one scene together, and it was phenomenal. And I, the direction they went in with the character by the end of the season, I was like, God damn it! You could have, you could have literally easily ran for another season with this character, and that was a disappointment. Um, but overall, it wasn't bad. Uh, the characters it's some of the best writing on tv and the ratings are showing it i mean it's it's 
it's starting to head into Walking Dead territory. I mean, they're they're doing like, you know, ten to fourteen million uh, viewers. I mean, oh. it's just it's just amazing, and they're getting. The weird thing is that they're not getting near the attention on social media. It's the first time I've ever seen that take place. Like when The Walking Dead was a phenomenon, social media knocked themselves out. But I actually I went and I, I did a bit of an experiment. I I went and I looked at Flash CW. And I, you know, you can put in Flash CW in Twitter and you'll have all these different threads of how many it is. I stopped counting at 150. But there are at least 150 threads on the CW Flash. I went to Yellowstone, and there were 59. One is one is getting like half a million viewers, and the other one and the other show is getting like 10 million plus. And it just I was amazed at the difference of the social media attention. But it's a very it's it's you know in a lot of circles it would be known as a conservative show. It's a cowboy show taking place in Montana, but. The acting, the um, the I, we mentioned the lady for it, and I'm actually looking forward to that show that uh, you had mentioned um, that the governor and her was in. It was a British show. Uh, oh, yes, uh, Britannia, I think it's called. Yes, Britannia. Yeah, I want I want to see that. When I told Susan, she just wanted to see it too, but yeah. she is just phenomenal. I I'm I would be shocked if she doesn't get nominated for an Emmy at some point in time because she is such a dramatic, a fantastic dramatic actress. Kevin Costner's fantastic in it. Yeah. They have some really good comedy, but it's it's not hokey comedy. It's just unintentional comedy, which is the funniest of all because you don't <laughs> really see it coming. Yeah. And um, the supporting cast, they're planning to do another spinoff in Texas uh, at, this, at the 666 Ranch. Um, they kind of laid the, the groundwork for that this uh, season. But he's building a universe for the prequels. And also uh, you got Montana and Texas now, and I'm sure you have crossovers. But he does have some weak story uh, line writings where um, storylines don't go anywhere. Sometimes he circles back, but there was one major glaring error from the end of last season where they had a potential setup between uh, – it was one of the local native tribes, and they just kind of did away with the storyline. There was no indication that they were going to do that. So there was some weak writing in that aspect of it, but um, – I can't like for the most part. I would say easily nine out of ten. It's just fantastic. You see it like if you really analyze it, you'll see it. But if you're just someone casually watching, you'll be like, "Wow, this feels so original because it's a western." And there's yeah. western. The western genre has been dead probably since Unforgiven in 1992. Really, I mean, Hell on Wheels was fantastic, but other than that, it feels fresh. And a lot of people, I love reading the comments on Twitter where you'll see people, and you can tell they're from New York City. And they're like, this is awesome. This is so original to me. It's cowboy. You know, it's got like a, what was that Billy Crystal film? City um, Slickers. City mm. It's a City Slickers. We're like, like, wow, this is awesome. They're riding horses and they have hats on that. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, a, they're really amazed by it. They're like, wow, this is, a, I like this. And I think that's where they're continuing to grow their viewership from. But, um, of course, it's renewed for next year. I mean, with those kind of fucking ratings, I mean, it's amazing. But that's I mentioned. I think I don't know whether I mentioned the show before, but uh, was you or John that was saying that you give something a chance to simmer? Well, they went from 4.8 finale last year, 4.8 million to like 10 million plus for the season premiere this year. Hmm. I, they doubled it. They doubled it. It was like a 112 percent jump in viewership. Hmm. That's just word of mouth, isn't it? That's yeah, just people just, word of just mouth. talking about mm -hmm. it after yeah. it finished, yeah. and everyone that they know has, has gone back to watch it. Hmm. Uh, I'm just going to so it's called Yellowstone. Yellowstone, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to see if it's available. I'm not going to bother with Netflix or uh, or Amazon. Some Paramount things. Network. I, I don't know whether you have access to the Paramount Network, but uh, it's. I, I suspect that the Paramount Network is going to get big over the next couple of years because. They're using shows like that as a tentpole. They're delivering those kind of numbers. It's like AMC. AMC had Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead, and it kind of turned yeah. it into a bigger... And I think this is what's going to happen with Paramount. Of course, Paramount has the Star Trek stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of AMC and HBO shows end up on Sky, which is yeah. the, um, the, the the satellite uh, TV service that I've got, but it doesn't seem to be available on there at the moment. Prime Video. It's on Prime Video. The first three seasons are on Prime Video, so if you is have that... an Amazon... If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can watch it online through Prime Video. 
Oh, 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 well, there you go, then. Yeah. But he's got the UK Prime, so it's probably different. Well, let's find out. Um, Yellowstone. Oh, fuck, I had a thought and it left. Oh, oh it's on okay. Amazon, but not on Prime. Uh, yeah, buy season one, £14.99. Oh. I'm not sure I've got to spend that much money on it. Scott, you got yeah. Paramount Plus? Did you have... Yes. You're not we sure? Don't yet. We don't yet. Oh. I just want to know if there's any difference yet. I went back Correct. on it for, for the sign up and it was the same shit they had before. But now they're... We, are, we bought a 75 inch TV that's been installed here in the next two weeks and part of the package was you get four free and I think Paramount Plus, I think it was Paramount Plus, uh, uh, Paramount Plus, Apple TV, and Disney Plus was free. So mm. I think I am going to be getting it, but okay. I, I won't know for a couple of weeks. All right. Actually, uh, I'm still debating if I'm going to collect my CPP. That's the old age pension we can start collecting when we hit 60 here. Oh, 60. Yeah. Well, that means we've got 60. to get to 67 now. Um, well, that's, well, there's two different ones. There's the Canadian pension plan and there's the... What's the other one? The old folks one? I don't know. Old age pension, yeah. Old age pension. We gotta wait till sixty we gotta wait till sixty five to get that one. Oh, that's probably the one that's similar to ours. I was yeah. got up to sixty seven now though. Yeah. I mean by the time I get that old hospital it'll probably go up to seventy or seventy five. They're basically just trying to wage us out. So they just want yeah. all those fuckers to die before they actually have to pay us our pensions. Yeah. Oh, well that's that's sweet. why I'm debating. I mean I should I get it the one now? If I wait till sixty five there's more money, right? But I can get it at sixty, it's a little less, but I'm yeah, afraid I'm fuck it. Turn. Yeah, that's the gamble, right? You know, yeah. one knows for sure. And part of me starting to yeah. think, fuck it. I like my friend down east. He's worked his whole. Like he said, I worked my whole fucking life. I'm fucking getting it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I have a private pension. I've, essentially, I started working in a bank when I was 16. When I got to 18, uh, basically, I started paying into a private pension. Um, the earliest I could retire is 55. But if I wait until I'm 60, then I get more. That's the gamble, isn't it? Yeah. You know, do I want more life where I can just enjoy myself, like from 55 onwards, yeah. but with less money so I can mm-hmm. do less? Yeah. Uh, or do I keep working for an extra few years and get a little bit more money yeah. so I've got less life ahead of me in which to spend more money? It's <laughs> like, oh, oh what's, yeah. where's the sweet spot? I know, At what I know. point is the best time to retire with, it, with enough money? <clears throat> I keep thinking I'll um, use that money to help me pay my fucking bills now. To get yeah. me sure I'm out of debt by the time I get to 65. I'll tell you, this time when I was buying Armageddon off the rack, I never thought I would be having this conversation. Yeah, no anyway. <laughs> way. When I so was that's... buying Armageddon 2001, I never thought I would be talking about pensions and retirements. Yeah. And... Welcome to the uh, old man talk. When do I take uh, my fucking money out? God damn yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a union pension I just uh, when I turned 50. I had a union pension I paid into for seven years from 18 to 25, and I paid in close to $2,900 in that day's money because it was like taking it weekly. I think it was $8 a week, yeah. and I did the calculations. It was about $3,000. Um, I contacted the local representative, and they said, we'll just write you a check, and it was for $121. So for all those kids out there that are working in union shops and you don't plan on sticking around, don't fucking pay it or fight it every – because you're never going to see it. You're never going to see a dime of that of that pension money. Mm. And it was hilarious. I said to Susan, I said, my God, can you imagine anyone – and there's so many part-time employees now who just – they're told you got to pay it and you'll get it when you're older. No, you don't because people are retiring and pensions – union pensions are just being eaten up like crazy. And you're never going to see a dime of it. So, Wow. <clears throat> Um, so, okay, let's get yeah, off old man so, union, old man pension talk to something I was else again. That's, um, that's scared off the final listener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck this. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, I think the type of people who listen to us are probably going to be about the same age range, aren't they? I can't who knows? Imagine yeah. That anybody is considerably younger than us is going to be listening to yeah. us talk about yeah. TV shows and comics yeah. and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so. Unless you just pity us, it might be a pity listen. <laughs> pity Which I'll listen. take. I'll fucking I'll take it. it. Yeah, I'll fucking I'll take, take a, a pity. pity listen. Yeah. Two or three, yeah. you know, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Where are we up to? 
what show we talk about next. I don't know. I've, well, we're just I've still got. Yeah, no, keep. Movies. I'm sorry, Paul. Just go. Just go. No, just, I, I. I don't I'm got nothing. Rest, I'm just saying I'm going to save mine for the oh. next show. So, oh, no, I, I no, just like I, jumping I, in here and you guys talk about shit that I don't yeah. watch and giving my opinion on. I don't know no, fuck not, what I'm talking about. No, I don't know what show that is, but I'm telling you it's fucking garbage. Yeah, you just facilitate me and Scott having a conversation yeah. once a month, and I appreciate that. Yeah. I do. Well, so thank you for no. your efforts. What <laughs> <laughs> you, what you guys, Scott. So, I've, um, I've got some more TV and a couple of movies that I want to bring up. Um, go ahead, then. I can't think of anything. There's a couple of things that I'm just kind of, while I'm listening to you speak, I'm going to casually bring it up. There's a, I watch a lot more YouTube, and I mentioned this to John before. Maybe yeah, I mentioned me it too. on the show. Yeah. I have about 30 YouTube channels that I watch now. Wow. And it's amazing the amount of really – it's one of those things when we were kids, not, something YouTube didn't exist. It's basically hmm. like having cable TV on the Internet Yeah. where, you, you know, I've got like 30 different channels, everything from – Joe Rogan to Howard Stern to Larry King, CNN. But there's some really cool channels I've been subscribing to. There's one in particular that um, I might as well take the moment to find it. Do, do, yeah, do. I was, when you started talking about cable, I said, you know the thing about YouTube and the difference between cable, and I don't know if, if, if this is the correct thing, is that remember when we were younger, you get those signals across the border, of this, and you're trying to get the, through the fuzzy signal to get you that one shot of titty on that one yeah. channel. <laughs> Soon we, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you through the snow, the heavy, heavy snow. You a nipple? I did it, yeah. and then and you're done for the week. So <laughs> it's a well. I mean, with this, you can literally pick. Like I get everything from news to music to entertainment news to, you know, I like a occasional wrestling every now and then. But even people with podcasts, it's mm. amazing that you can get so much content from so many different genres in one place. Yeah. And that's the amazing thing about it. But with well, this... Well, I've got the uh, YouTube up for trying to think of stuff I watch, and just on this page alone, it's got a story on how WW2 Bomber became a gas station. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, it, and it's not just in a certain genre. But yeah. the, the one I was speaking about, it's called Rock and Roll True Stories. That's the name of the uh, channel. Hmm. And I love this because... Um, well, the example, the example, of, have you ever heard of a musician called Billy Squire? Yep. Okay, you've heard of Billy Squire. Yep. How about you? Dan? No, oh. no, name rings a bell, but not in any meaningful way, no. Mm. He's, a, he's an American singer that had, and this is one of those things, because these clips are usually anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes long, so they're not big time investments, mm -hmm. which is nice if you just want to watch a half hour of interesting uh, programming. But uh, the one Billy Squire is about 12 minutes, and I knew he was very successful in the 80s, and then early 80s, and then something happened, and his career went to shit. But I didn't know the story behind it, and that's the thing I love about this channel. They don't go after the big stories. They go after, like, uh, the one-hit artists. Like, um, you know, if I, heard, if I said a band winger, have you heard of them? No. Yes. White Lion. No. Name sounds familiar. Exactly. There, there were hair bands from the 90s, and there's, song, there's uh, bands from the 80s, and it's really cool because they dig into why these bands went away, basically, what, mm -hmm. what their downfall was, and, you know, the, the conflicts within it. Now, the guy, his, his voice is a bit monotone, but the information, the, the amount of research that this guy puts into this channel is fantastic. I, the thing I love about this, and I like this about when I, when I listen to something, I don't like to hear a lot of stuff that I've heard, didn't that I've heard before. And unfortunately, John and I have talked about this. There's so many channels out there where it's just regurgitated, and you hear the same information you heard before. With this channel, all new information and little tidbits that I didn't know. And this one he's talking about Billy Squire, just as an example. Um, basically, he had a, a really successful. He was doing arenas and so forth. Then he did a video for. Um, it was an album he put out in 1983, and John, you may remember the song from if you remember Billy Squire. Hmm. But the song isn't important. It's the fact that he made a video, and he let his girlfriend hire the director. Hmm. And this guy was a rock and roll guy, and the director put him in pink satin and had him dancing around on stage, and he looked like a complete idiot, and it killed his career. And I wow. did not know the story. He literally said that he went from his album sales went in half, his arena tours went to hot like he said it killed my career and it's funny because they did an interview with the folks from uh, uh uh 
not much music, VH1. No, sorry, it was MTV. Sorry, mm-hmm. MTV. Yeah. yeah. Did a, they did a documentary about MTV, and they I- interviewed, like, dozens, hundreds of people from behind the scenes, the producers and people who worked on the show. And no one could disagree, no one could agree on what the best video of all time was. But he said something like 87% of the people agreed that this Billy Squire video was the worst video they had ever seen. Wow. I, you should watch it. It's hilarious. I'm sitting there saying to myself, I can't imagine. Like, it's a little different today because if you do certain things, it gets attention. But back in 1983, when he did this video, people just turned out. It was just like, oh, my hmm. God. This rock and roller that I looked up to is prancing around in pink clothes. It, it, it killed his career, and I didn't know the full story. But this kid, in 12 minutes, gave me all the facts, all the little tidbits beyond the scene, and I'm thinking, bam, sold. So I've subscribed mm-hmm. to it. Again, it's rock and roll true stories, and it's very, very interesting watching. Hmm. Well, you are bringing up a talk, YouTube. There is one thing. I've mentioned this a long time ago, but there, if you really enjoy independent uh, science fiction films, like small little short films, like yeah. they're trying to learn how to do their craft, and they... Uh, there's a channel called Dust, D-U-S-T, and they're, that's what they show, these small little an, um, science fiction shows, mostly science fiction, animation, sh- sort of stuff, anything to do with that that science fiction. And there's some really good shit on there that's uh, very interesting, very entertaining. Um, it is, it's something of a gold mine is YouTube, because they... The, the film festival that I used to go to every year before COVID shuts everything down, there was a lot of independent films, a lot of short films, first-time directors, that sort of thing. Um, and they were pretty much all on YouTube. When you went to the yeah. film festival and then you came home and you were talking about it uh, with your friends and you just look, you go to YouTube, oh, it's there. This is it. This is, this is, this is what yeah. I saw on the big screen. And it's all there. And like I say, it's like a gold mine. There's all sorts yeah. on there, all sorts, so much that you actually need help being directed to it mm-hmm. or yeah. you just throw a search word out into the void and see what comes back. Yeah. And you never know. You might find something that you're interested in. So if you do find somebody that is consistently putting out interesting content, hit the subscribe button. Yeah. And like you say, it's, it's like having a completely new TV network. The, and I, I, can, I can see why people subscribe to it on the surface of it. You think, why do I want to subscribe to YouTube? There's only so many audience reaction videos that i can watch in a day and i don't and i'm not subscribing to youtube just to watch those but there's so much more available so much more available on youtube people make programs and things yeah. actual sort of documentaries entertainment movies and put it out on on youtube it's yeah. um there's another channel here stuff. too called the cg brothers they do the same thing they got yeah. 4.6 million subscribers Wow. And they and they do the same thing. They and for a while, when I was spending a lot of time on the blog, I was going through and watching these things, writing it up on the blog, then sending links to go to these channels and watch these films if they enjoyed it. I might do that again because I had to increase. <laughs> I ran out of space on the blog, so I had to in, pay for more space. So, well, to kind of tie it together. Um... Paul, when you mentioned earlier about Cobra Kai and how it started, it started on YouTube. That's right. Yeah, yeah. it did. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I uh, actually didn't watch it on YouTube. I watched it on, um, I think I got it on Amazon. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was on Amazon. It, it was it was very cheap to buy. Yeah. Um, it was actually as cheap to buy as it was to subscribe to YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, yep. which you had to do at the time to be able to watch it. So I thought, well, <laughs> rather than subscribe to YouTube, watch it once, if I buy it on Amazon, it's there to keep. And I can watch it in my own time, at my own leisure, which is exactly what I did. And then, bang, it's ended up on Netflix. <laughs> so, so, well, there you go. That was £4.99 that I didn't need to spend, but I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, speaking of that, there's, you have to buy packages for your internet, correct? Is that true? Uh, no. No, I, I mean, it depends. How, how do you mean by packages? Because well, I just subscribe. I, I just pay a monthly subscription for so much data. I've actually got unlimited broadband. Oh, um, so okay, no, I saw. So for I don't, some I don't reason, I was cap, reading but... somewhere that some some countries they they make it so that like we just pay. It sounds like we do the same thing. We have a, a package and we pay for. I like I got unlimited gigabytes for my my internet. 
and I can yeah. go on anything and watch. But for some reason, I was thinking of something different. Some countries they have you have to you almost like YouTube. You like you were yeah. talking. You mentioned just a second ago about having to pay for YouTube, where I can just yes. punch in YouTube and watch it on my computer. Right. Oh, right. Okay. So your YouTube subscription is included in your uh, internet. Yeah. So anything right right now, I can go anywhere and look at anything, but, you know, unless it's paid streaming service like Amazon or Netflix or anything like that, but like YouTube is not part of that, that part of it. It's just there, you know? Right. So, yeah, I don't know of anyone who offers like a free youtube thing you get more of that sort of thing with uh, mobile phone providers mm-hmm. over here mm-hmm. uh, it's like i'm shopping around for a new contract at the moment mm-hmm. and there's certain tv channels that i can get include like disney i can get disney with a certain package i can get apple tv with a certain package mm-hmm. um so that's that's with mobile phones but with television packages I'm not really aware of that. I think Sky pretty much has the monopoly on TV channels at the moment. So if you're going to get internet, like home broadband, yeah. it kind of includes some more and more Sky channels, whether it's Sky TV, which includes like your AB, uh, HBO shows and, and Sky Originals, that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. um, uh, or you get Sky Sport or Sky Movies. I, everything uh, Sky seems to have most of the media sewn up over here. Okay, yeah. If it's not BBC or like the ITV Channel Four, that sort of thing, yeah, it, it's probably owned by Sky. And yeah, I understand. That now, I, I get, we're kind of on the same way. Where mm. you get you you get your internet, you have these channels that are available, streaming services that come with that. We don't have that. We have internet, but anything extra like Apple TV. Um, Amazon, Net, uh, Netflix, Disney, any of those streaming services, they're extra that we have to pay to Netflix or each individual thing. It's not it bundled in with our Netflix, our internet package. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. This it's very confusing. There's mm. so many different subscription packages and rates. It's like I've subscribed to uh, to Stars at the moment, so I can mm. watch The Great which I have on my list to talk about, mm. and Doom Patrol, uh, mm. Pennyworth's on there as well, but I'm really not that interested in Pennyworth. Yeah. And that's, I've got to pay Amazon for that. So I've got Amazon Prime anyway, but I've got to pay an extra subscription to Amazon so that I can watch stars. So mm. that particular subscription is through Amazon. That's not through, like, all the other TV comes from the sky. Mm-hmm. But I don't pay Sky for stars. I've got to pay Amazon for stars. It's re- it really is confusing with the, the amount of money that I'm sending to different people, mm-hmm. and even like subcontracting like via Amazon to get stars. It just gets ridiculous. Yeah, it's been really helpful if I could just pay one subscription and just get, you know, whatever I wanted. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, but no. Yeah. So hey, I looked up Dust too. It's I mean, subscribe. It didn't show up on a thing, but they. If you're a science fiction nut, and that's what you want to watch, mm. you, some, you don't even really have to. You have <clears throat> to su- subscribe to Disney Plus or thing. There's two two channels on themselves that's just tons and tons and tons of content or science fiction mm. sort of things. So yeah, I like science fiction. You know, I usually get my science fiction fix by things like Black Mirror or mm-hmm. I Love Death and Robots. Yeah. Is uh, is pretty good as well. Um, that's Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. It was a bit yeah. disappointing, to be honest. Didn't really hit the mark. Yeah. Um, I, can't, I kind of want to watch Battlestar Galactica again because I believe they're doing. Are they doing a movie or a reboot or something? It's funny you brought that up. I, I, I saw a thing real close. I didn't deep, dive deep into it. Just a headline saying that the new Net Battlestar Galactica will take place in the same uh, universe as the series that was Roger Moore did. Uh, Ronald Moore did. Uh, which I I didn't I should have read more into it, but it just sounds a little confusing because, um, that series was pretty well self-contained. Well, you yeah. Know? Plus, if it's taking place in the same universe, then it can't be about Battlestar Galactica unless yeah. it's about the same people and the same characters and things. Yeah, because that, so. they, they wrap that up. Yeah. They had a they had a, and I watched the uh, the pilot, I guess, for Adama. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh! Just one second. I gotta step up for a second. Right yeah. back. Yeah. Is 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 DoorDash order is here? 
So, but breakfast has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah. well, it sounds like he knows something about this, so I don't want to get too far away from that conversation. Uh, we go, going. we go far away from conversations all the time. Shit. You know. <laughs> so, but just while before he comes back, I, yeah. just, I mentioned a, a show called The Great. Yeah. which is on Stars. Uh, if that's available, I can highly recommend that. It's mm-hmm. about uh, Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, um, mm-hmm. the Russian rulers from, oh, Jesus, how many centuries ago? I forget. Yeah. Um, it's really, really good. He's got Ellie Fanning and Nicholas Holt in it. You know, Nicholas oh, Holt, who I do know what you mean. the X-Men movies. It's... Um, it's supposed to be based, well, it is based on historical events, but the title of the show is The Great, yeah. and a subheading is An Occasionally True Story. <laughs> and it's really, really good. Very, yeah. very entertaining. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah. Um, these, the characters are just <laughs> so entertaining. Everything, it, it, the, 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 the script, the dialogue, the performance, uh, it's like Peter the Great, Nicholas Holt, he's just yeah. such an idiot. Yeah. And it's just, everyone's just sort of having sex with each other and killing each other and <laughs> swearing. And it just, oh, it's just so entertaining. It's yeah. so funny. I, I wasn't interested in it. I thought it was some sort of documentary. Yeah. My wife was watching it. And I'm sort of reading and I'm sort of like looking over the top of my book at this thing. I'm thinking, <laughs> What did he just say? <laughs> and I put the book down and I started watching it. And I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. Oh. So it's uh, season two was just released yeah. on uh, this Stars sub channel that Amazon have got. So if you or any of the listeners have got access to it, I can highly recommend it. It's a very, very entertaining show. Really I think it's on Amazon here funny. in Canada. Yeah, it's very funny. So. Uh, I can highly recommend it. Um, can we squeeze in anything else? Oh, I got something you probably you 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 may have watched. I don't know. Doesn't mean because it's British you watched it. But uh, um, Miranda uh, is showed up. Uh, I know what it is. Yeah. I know the actor. I haven't actually watched that that series. That yeah. type of sitcom isn't really my bag. Oh yeah. Um, it reminds me very much of the sitcoms that I used to watch back in the eighties. Oh okay. Um, it's it's a lot like that, which doesn't make it a bad thing. And it's not particularly dated. It's like yeah. modern humour, mm-hmm. but it's just the setting, the characters. The you know, it's that very typical sort of British sitcom where someone gets put into some sort of ridiculous situation oh. and tries to enact yeah. a ridiculous solution which goes wrong, and everybody gets embarrassed. It's, it's the like, same as American sort of, sitcom. It's the same thing. Of, yeah, it's it's probably the staple of any any sitcom yeah. really, but. I believe it's very good. She's, oh, she's become super. very popular off the back of that show. So yeah, I, I it showed up and I watched in one episode and I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's she's yeah. got she's got, she's very physical comedy too. Yes, and uh, yeah. uh, she's one. She breaks the third wall. She talks to the to the the audience during yeah. the, at the start and at the uh, during the show and then at the end of the show instead of having the credit. It, the credits roll and the, the actor students still staying in character. They all stop and they look at the camera and wave. And you know, this is this is I am who I am. It has a, I believe his proper name is Tom Ellis. It could be wrong, but he was a star of of uh, Lucifer. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's in there. Uh, I I see. You're I'm the opposite of you. That's my type of show because right. it's so. Like it, it has that same sort of situation where it is is basically g- generic with any sitcom in, yeah. in Canada, Britain, or America. It's yeah. the same thing, but there's sometimes they just there's certain characters or actors, and the show does certain twists that make it interesting. And with her, at first it was looking at the camera, talking to the audience. Basically, yeah. tell okay, okay, piss off now. I got to do the show sort of thing, and then looking at at the camera, she's so big and kind of awkward. Yeah, and she yeah. and I don't often to okay. I'm going to speaking for myself personally. Physical comedy, I don't see a lot of female physical comedians, but she no. and so that she does, she'll, she'll fall over, or fall through a door, get caught, and so. so I, I like that physical comedy part of it. So, yeah, the I, I don't know, it was, uh, 
thinking, geez, I had to make some cutbacks. I was cut, want to cut back with BB, BB, uh, uh, Brit Box here, but I kind of like watching that show. And it's like four seasons of it. Yeah. So, uh, um, but it, I, it's like, oh, here's something. I mentioned this to you before. I watch mostly comedy on Brit Box. I have a hard yeah. time watching the British, not because it's British drama. I just yeah. don't like fucking drama. Period. So yeah, no, I'm a bit like that. No, uh, I, I think the BBC put out a lot of very, very high quality dramas, but mm-hmm. I don't watch them. Yeah, <laughs> it's not yeah. They do a lot of police dramas and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't watch them, but a lot. Of the, yeah, they do. They do do some quite high, quite high quality shows. Yeah, I think um, I think Miranda is probably um, sort of a modern day Victoria Wood, who was an extremely popular female comedian yes. many years ago, who unfortunately died well before her time. Hmm. Um, but she's very very much like that in in many ways. Yeah. Um, so if if Victoria Wood is on Britbox, that might be worth a look as well. Okay. Uh, because it's very much the same sort of humour. I think <laughs> Victoria Wood has influenced Miranda very, very much. Yeah. And uh, on Victoria Wood, that's very early appearances from um, Julie Walters as well, who's an Oscar-winning actress. Oh yeah. Who you may know. Yeah, mm. I do. That yeah. name sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Julie Walters is very, very funny on it. <laughs> very, yeah. very funny. Yeah. <laughs> she played yeah. one of the most famous sketches that Victoria Wood and Julie Walters did was it's called Acorn Antiques, mm. and it's um, it's supposed to be uh, like a soap opera, but it's very, very cheap, very, yeah. very cheap sets, very, very poor acting, very, very <laughs> poor direction. They play it seriously, um, but everything about it is just so comedic. It's so funny, and Julie Walters plays a tea lady. Uh, so when they, they happen to be in like a cafe or a restaurant or whatever or in the shop, uh, Julie Walters comes out with a tray with a, like a, a teapot and a couple of cups in it, and she sort of she plays like this older infirm type lady and she <laughs> staggers along there's the entire length of the room shaking this tray around like she's got Parkinson's <laughs> so there's tea <laughs> spilling all over the place <laughs> and you can see her coming and they're waiting for her to come and the comedy value is just she just spends so long staggering along the full length of the screen to get there spilling all this tea all over the place there's tea no thank you and then she turns around <laughs> and walks all the way back. <laughs> it's just you gotta it's physical comedy though it's physical comedy it's it looks funnier than it sounds yeah. um so yeah, it, it, Victoria Woods on Britbox. If you like Miranda, then watch that as well. It's. it's I was just going to look it up on YouTube because usually yeah. you Victoria Wood. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, she had a few different series. I think Victoria Wood on TV is probably the more popular one. She probably did a couple of stand-up shows as well, but uh, extremely popular female comedian of a time. Yeah. Oh, Don't here's some stand-up. Soon. Wait a minute. Did she? I might know who she is. She did a show. Oh fuck yeah, that's her. Yeah, the the best of uh, diner ladies. But there are these ladies working the oh, diner yes. in a hospital Dinner. or something. Yeah. Dinner yes, ladies. yes, yeah, I know who ladies. she is. It, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, uh, yeah, not not as in school dinners. I think. Yeah, I think they work in a factory. I think they serve. Yeah, it's a factory. Her. Yeah, it was either a yeah, hospital right. or a factory or something. That's right. She was yeah. in that. Yes, but yeah, but her own shows where she does sort of like the sketches of the yeah. like the stand up bits, mm-hmm. really good. Mm. Okay, so um, we've been hey Scott, under the fort, Scott. Yeah, you were about to tell us about Battlestar Galactica, yeah. so we, we'd we <clears throat> pin the conversation, wait for you to come back. I came back, and it's funny because I don't think anyone see the video, but you're, I know you're telling something funny, but I miss the what the first fifty percent of it. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, I could laugh along with them, or I can just say. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I came, I came in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. What was it? Was always the way. You were talking yeah. about Battlestar Galactica and something that you yeah. read. You're or... just about to tell oh, us something about Adama, Adama I think. Adama, I the, the, the yes. Yeah, I watched the first. It was a it was a pilot trailer. Well, I should say a pilot. It was dropped that they were considering doing a series on. That was very very good. Um, it was like I want to say it was like three hours long. Hmm. Did you, either one of you see it? The one no, you I might be talking about is called uh, uh, it's uh, called Blood and Stone. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You Maybe talk about that. Pardon me. This is something recent, is it? No, this, no, it's a while ago. Oh, oh you've never seen it? Oh my, it's oh, really good. Are you talking about the one that fed into the the reboot series? 
Well, um, less. Yes. Because it, that was probably seven or eight years ago. Yeah, Future Adama. Future yeah. Adama, whoever it was. Edward James Olmos Adama. No, no, he wasn't in it. It was no. a younger version of him. Yeah. Oh, I, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're like a prequel. Yes, I, no, yeah. I never saw it. No, I didn't watch never it. Saw it. No, I didn't was... watch the prequel, uh, the prequel show. That's the only thing I can think of them doing because I don't know how they do another show about Star Galactica mm. in that timeline using the same cast from Ronald Moore's series. There's no unless they're gonna do a Walking Dead because I know the Walking Dead is doing a thing where they're gonna revisit characters, but uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't get it if they do that. I know a lot of the cast weren't crazy about the fact that they're rebooting it so quickly. I remember seeing an interview with Trisha Hapler. Oh, sorry. Well, you guys didn't hear that anyhow. Never mind. No, uh, there was an interview with Patricia Heffler, and they uh, they mentioned they're rebooting it. The look on her face, you, you would think the interview would just ask if we could fart in her coffee. Mm. Like, it was just like, wow, really? Oh, that's mm. soon. And it does I, feel too soon. It's really I, a classic I, series. I've heard a couple of interviews with her, and I think she she has a lot of love for that show. I, mm. I don't think that was just a job to her. I think she's sort of, like, very invested in that. Um, I have a lot of love for her. And very proud of it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at least a couple of times a week, eh? <laughs> a couple of times a week, yeah. <laughs> On the way to the bank, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I can imagine that she'd probably be um, quite upset about that because I, I yeah. think she's very, very, very proud of that, very fond of that show. And if it's all rebooting it so soon, I can imagine she's thinking, well, hang on a minute, it's still there. It's still there to be loved and enjoyed. When we're and talking about take... Vancouver... The golden mm. age of Vancouver filming was Battlestar Galactica, and when Arrow first started, that was yeah. when Vancouver, people loved being there, it had a great vibe, there was some really groundbreaking television coming out of there, and to see what it's at now, it's just, you know, crap, wow. but I mean... It's yeah, crap because it's... of COVID, you know, they can't get out and play in the Vancouver wild in the summertime, so mm. it's like... Quality of the acting, uh, like it's not even close anymore, but I mean... Um, did you guys know about uh, Saul Ty, the character, the actor who played Saul Ty, about his medical issues he's had over the last couple of years? No, mm. this no. isn't co- this isn't co-related. He had slipped and fell, and he is in very rough shape. Actually, he, he they did a GoFundMe. Oh, okay. And it, it was huge. They raised like almost a half a million dollars for this guy, wow. and it was funny because Trisha Heffler and uh, Katie Sackoff. And then James Edward Almos all did uh, sent retweets of saying, "Look, you know what? You know he didn't he didn't want anything said about it. So finally, he agreed to it. You could tell it was like he didn't want to go begging for money until, you know. They, and once they get the word, everyone in that cast said, "Help him out, give money. You know, he's got a. I guess it was a U.S. You know, the U.S." Um, healthcare system and he was it was like hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah saying so, more about that mm. yeah exactly exactly mm. exactly so but i mean he i think it was he raised close to a half a million dollars and wow. all of his cast members you could tell how uh, beloved he was he was quite ill for a while yeah. and i think i haven't heard anything about him in the last couple of months but uh you know that again that character salt high oh my god what a classic character mm-hmm. you know yeah I'd never seen that actor before, um, but people like that, they must have been around for years. You don't just go out and find a random old guy to play. He's a... Canadian. He's huge in a, he's huge in a Canadian um, theater. Right. So he's been around for a lot of years. Yeah. I saw him in a couple of things after. Um, mm-hmm. That tends to happen when somebody's in a show like that to get put into other things. I've seen him in a couple of other things. Never even seen him before until I saw him yeah. in Battlestar Galactica, but you're absolutely right. It's good actor. You know, he was in, it was an excellent show. He was in Dark Skies. They put him in remember the Steven Spielberg series that they did five seasons, Dark Skies. Is that the Dark, one with the guy from the... Falling Skies? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Noah Wiley is called, I think. Yeah, he was in that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sir. While well, you guys are talking, I'm looking up trying to find like Battlestar cast on YouTube and stuff. And I always love these fucking. They, they have this, you know. Where is they? Battlestar Galactica, then and now. Battle um, Star Trek Enterprise, then and now. So, I love this clickbait shit. Because it has Battlestar Galactica. It shows uh, Helfer. What's her name again? Start her first name? Trisha Helfer. Trisha Helfer. Have a picture of her on the left. Then. 
and then a picture of some fat chick on the right <laughs> saying now. <laughs> that, that fat chick is not her. Yeah. That is- She's just oh. not changed. None of them have changed. It's only about five years since the show ended. And then, <laughs> oh, Lord of the Rings, then and now. It shows, yeah. um, oh, fuck, I can't remember the actress's name. She's the daughter of the rock singer for Meryl Smith. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, she was in Armageddon, wasn't she? Yeah. Liv, Liv Tyler. Liv, Liv Tyler. Tyler. Liv Tyler on the left, looking like she did from Lord of the Rings. And then another fat chick with a baby. <laughs> on the right, and it's great if you're if you're an extra large woman lis- listening, it's easy for me to say fat chick because it more it, it really sends out a good vibe. But um, oh wow, oh yeah, what? <laughs> all these are the freaking same. They're either really large women, or yeah. they, suddenly they're got these huge hips and great big tits and. Oh, yeah. what a bunch of bullshit. And it's just not the same person, is it? That oh, no. Stuff, it's just not no. the same person. It's just crazy. I watched the road host. They did road host there. I watched the whole video. Oh, and... oh, oh got to stop you. Sorry. <laughs> Battle started Galactica in 1978 and then and now. Captain Apollo, Richard Hatch, right? Yeah. The guy on the right is named Richard Hatch, but it's just the guy from fucking Survivor. Yeah, they do on <laughs> purpose. Jesus they're taking a lot of grief with it. I know they did Road Host and oh. they did Patrick Swayze, and then, and then they had R.I.P. Now, which was just <laughs> brutal. And the comment section, and the comment section was basically a big fuck you, like you piece of shit. It was like you're a piece of shit. It was just t- tearing him apart. Yeah. And the, the hilarious thing is, in the thing, Jeff Healy, who mm. passed away, the great guitarist, the yeah. main guitarist, mm. passed away. They had him then. And then they had now him still alive. They had a picture oh, of him like a year later, like just really crude shit. And, and the comment section, then he got what he wanted. He got the clicks, he got the views, yeah. but every comment was you're a piece of shit. And I've reported you like yeah. just terrible, terrible things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, funnily enough, I think Richard Hatch is dead as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's, yeah, if yeah. there's a, a before and after, then it's a similar sort of thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. When he started down that road, I thought that's where it was going to go to be. I did. Honest. No, I yeah, did. This is yeah. two years ago, you know, but it wasn't even the same picture free. Anyways, we are almost out of time here. So let's close this show. Okay. Mm, and okay. we're done with that. Um,. You guys did a great job filling in for everything. Well, I just simply sat back and watched and listened and interrupted a few times. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's it. Um, the uh, I don't know really even how to end this. Um, so that's it for this show. We'll be back in uh, a week or two weeks for you. Yeah. Us, we're going to go take a piss break and then we'll come back and start recording the second show. Um, so, uh, for me, if you want to follow on Twitter, it's all capital letters T P. No, yeah, the pulp culture cafe T P C C cafe under that uh, under uh, slash whatever it is E H and and. You can follow their posts to come up when the shows are coming up. There is no interaction with anybody. I don't interact with anyone. You want to follow? That's great. I will not follow back. It is simply a promotional tool. So, oh, and there goes the dingy dingy. Uh, someone really, that's someone really angry about what you just said. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, and then you can. Everybody following yours. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I got three followers right now on the. Ooh, yeah. So that's it. I saw three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Who was well, the third? Must one? Be me, Scott. Uh, else. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's uh, another from. Uh, uh, now you got to make me look. Um, yeah, I saw th- you did have two. It was two and two for the longest time, and I yeah. saw the three. Oh yeah, it's a rolling. Here we go. We're on the big. Yeah. We're on the road. We're on, We're the, on road. the road. Big three. Um, is that young lady who introduced herself at that Comic Con? No, happens? this is. Does she still listen, or does she come to her senses? It's from uh, <laughs> at <laughs> Steve at, at at everything I've learned from movies. Steve and oh, Izzy discuss movies and stuff. They're they're usually a, a, a not usually I should say they they make very uh, few guest appearances on Hobie. That's oh, a okay. history of bad podcast. And when we entered our, our yearly 
list of whatever we listed yeah. this year. They, um, uh, uh, people just follow you, then mute you. That's all they fucking do on that goddamn platform. So, anyways, that's that's, that's 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 the other one. Actually, I should remind, I'm follow the history of bad uh, ideas because I do interact with them, send them questions and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's just I I want to stay off Twitter. I don't want to be back on it. Uh, you can also go to the Pulp Culture Cafe dot com. Um, I have to do some redesigning. So if you do go and see that it's kind of fucked up, it's because I'm playing with it, trying to change the design of it and add some stuff and whatever. But you can go there. Uh, that's it for me. You guys? Oh, I have a Twitter account. Uh, it's accidentman underscore UK. Um, I don't really post anything of interest, to be quite honest. But um, it, it, if anyone does reach out for a bit of a chat about pop culture shit or I'm big into video games, have at it. But again, I don't follow back. I don't play those games. Um, Scott? Um, my Twitter handle is at capital S Scott capital reads. So capital S C O T T um, capital R E A D S one. And I'm, uh, I'm using it more than I used to, but basically it's just to make ha ha every now and then. Okay. All right, so that's it. I just retweet funny of people. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, So that's it. Thanks for downloading, taking the time to listen. Um, Uh, uh, There's a sign-off signal. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So um, talk to you next time, folks, or listen to you next time, or make curse words about you next time. Anyways, okay. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Your sister's cunt. Ladies and gentlemen, my mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you. That's all, folks. Thank you. Come again. Oh. You can be, uh, yes. Sorry, you're clicking again. Your your mic is hitting your zipper. Oh, sorry. No. Of course. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I can solve that, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. It would have been weird oh, if he would have stood oh. up and took his pants off. I was going to say, your chest hair scrub out of my case, your shirt, darling. Could you just take... <laughs> <laughs>